Hey everyone, and welcome to the February edition of the NFTX Gov Call. Uh, we run this governance call every month on the first Wednesday of the month at 4:30 GMT. Uh, this week we have a couple of things to go through. Um, we'll start off with a quick word from Alex to welcome everyone, and then we'll take uh, hand over to Chop to go through a potential NFTX uh, treasury proposal. And then we're also going to hear from Ato about uh, Flawed Owl and how that's going to fit in uh, with NFTX as well. And once we've gone through those, if there's any other business, we'll open it to the floor for people to contribute. Um, but for now, I'll just pass over to Alex if you have anything you want to say before we start, Alex. Yeah, sure. Um, hey, everyone. It uh, was a pretty fun January getting inventory staking out, which is something we've been working on for a number of months. Um, and you can learn more about that on our blog and also on academy.nftx.io. Uh, but yeah, that was a, a pretty big upgrade. Uh, and since we've gotten that finished, now we're kind of looking at where to go next. Um, there's a lot of little things we want to finish up, uh, like different types of zaps. Um, one thing right now that is a bit of a, an annoyance for stakers uh, is that, especially inventory stakers, is that even though you can avoid the mint fee um, on your way into staking, when you exit staking, you still have to pay a redeem fee uh, to get NFTs back if you ever want to finish staking and actually get some random NFTs back. So <clears throat> that's like one of those apps we're working on along with some others that will allow you to kind of claim rewards and then add them to your inventory side. Uh, we also have Toes, who's our new business development lead. Uh, who's joined core just this week. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think we're up to like 10 people on the core team now, which is a good number. I, I don't think we want to get have it get too much bigger uh, because, you know, after it gets past the dozen, it can get uh, kind of lose those squad vibes. But yeah, everything's going really well. Uh, we have some snapshot proposals right now for uh, changes in the punk vault fees. And then also just a slight tweak to the default fees. And looking at our June dashboard, I think our 30-day fees are as high as they've been possibly ever. Uh, we're up to uh, 1.2 mil per month for stakers that they're earning. And back up to 40 million in total value locked, um, just with like a 1,000 users. So... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all going pretty great, I think. Uh, it's pretty cool how NFTs are still rocking upwards despite the rest of crypto uh, kind of going down and crabbing. So, yeah, uh, Chop, do you want to talk about the, your treasury proposal a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll take it over. Let me share my screen a sec. Uh, so I've made a quick deck on, can you see it? Or not okay so i made a quick uh deck on the treasury proposal i'm working on uh which is called xip 20 so the 20th uh, xip um it's basically the deck uh runs through the like the top level points um so i'll just run through that if, if anybody has any questions or remarks just interrupt me uh so this proposal, uh, I started, I don't know how good you can see the actual text, so I'll, I'll uh, also read it. So I started looking at the current situation of the Dow Treasury, uh, which is heavily weighted towards our LP positions. So as a Dow, we're market making uh, several pairs, mainly Punk ETH, NFTX ETH, and Glyph ETH, uh, and then uh, a couple other smaller ones. Uh, so 40 roughly 40 percent of the uh, total value of our treasury is utilized for that so it's active it's active and it helps the product so that's the main reason why we're doing it uh deepens liquidity on our uh yeah blue chip faults uh so it makes them more effective for actual users uh then 45 percent is our own token and i'll dive a bit deeper into that because uh, 
we can't really consider that as value if we don't sell it. Uh, so it's 45% of the paper uh, paper number, but it's not actually usable. Uh, also, we feel that the current value is uh, under va fair value uh, because it's the yeah the t uh, TVL of the protocol is less than the treasury, so um, it's kind of under under value. Uh, that's 45%, then there's 30% in just NFTs, which are not uh, in LP positions. So uh, mainly crypto punks and glyphs. Uh, and then there's about 2%, I think a bit less even, uh, left, which is just uh, ETH or USDC uh, or Sushi. Um, so that's the current breakdown of the treasury, which kind of shows how little liquid assets we have at the moment. Um, then I'm drafting a thesis. So uh, the main points is that long term, uh, I think everybody within core and everybody within the uh, NFTX DAO is uh, bullish on the entire e Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, so we intend to stay uh, within this like ecosystem and also hold assets related to the ecosystem, mainly EVE. Uh, but short and midterm, uh, mainly short term, as we've all seen in the past weeks, uh, things can get pretty chaotic very quickly uh, on price level. Uh, so we need uh, risk management within the DAO just to prepare for potential extended downwards markets uh, so that we can stay operational as a DAO. Um, and then for the NFTX balance sheet, especially the NFTX token, uh, the thesis would be, or in, in this uh, proposal would become that we will never sell NFTX if we feel it's undervalued. So currently we wouldn't feel comfortable selling uh, either OTC or like uh, to towards the community. Uh, but on the other hand, it's a pretty good thing to distribute uh, small batches of NFTX uh, from the treasury when we feel the value is fair or more than fair, uh, so overvalued. Uh, and this this whole thesis is kind of similar to Hasu's uh, uh, article. It, there's a link in the deck, uh, which I'll share also uh, in the actual proposal. Uh, and it runs through like, uh, yeah, kind of the mindset of how to manage a treasury for a DAO. Um, so that's the thesis. Then future outlook or the outcome uh, which I want to uh, reach with this proposal is that for the DAO, we uh, aim to secure a minimum of two years runway uh, for, for the core team. Uh, so current burn rate is approximately 1.3 mil. Uh, including everything, so all the salaries, all the operational expenses, uh, audits, all those things. Um, so we want to secure two years, um, have that set aside as stable coins, so no uh, like crazy risky uh, positions within OM, fork, farming, uh, just like straight up stable coins for if everybody else uh, or if everything else fails. Uh, and also to uh, note that everything in this proposal will not include any additional income uh, that we generate by, for instance, uh, we have a huge position in Punk Eve, which we intend to stake. Uh, so we'll get APY from that. Uh, but we consider that zero, basically, uh, just because we, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bonus, but we can't really predict uh, what the APYs will be a year from now. Uh, especially when you move into like a extended crap or bear market, uh, all yields go goes to kind of near zero. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll just not uh, count that in. Uh, so then there's a recommendation list. This is just a copy paste from my Excel sheet, uh, but I have to word it uh, more nicely. Uh, it's all taken uh, when Eve was at twenty four hundred. I think it's twenty seven hundred something at the moment or 26, um, basically breaks down in uh, removing a part of the NFTX ETH uh, liquidity position. Uh, so we have 10 mil worth uh, of this position uh, on SushiSwap. So we, uh, we intend to take out 20%. It uh, doesn't really impact 
price uh, on selling and buying, uh, but it gives us a, a bit of ETH and NFTX, which we won't sell. Uh, so we'll sell the ETH into USDC, uh, then unwind a couple older vaults. Uh, so XE Origin and Kitty Gen Zero and sell the NFTs uh, below floor or uh, a little bit below floor, which would give us this USDC amount. Uh, then Eve Glyph, and from the Eve Glyph pair, uh, we intend to lend that Eve to Florida first, uh, because Florida is launching with uh, LBP, uh, which uh, they lend the Eve from NFTX, and then when that's returned, uh, sell the Eve, uh, and then some NFTs, which is not a lot uh, left, but there's like some floating NFTs on Ronin which we haven't sold yet and are overpriced at the moment uh, versus the floor. Uh, so we have to amend prices and get that sold. Uh, so that's it. Then the, the other three points is the approach we take to when we start to stake Punk ETH and Punk single sided on our own protocol. Um, I had some thoughts on selling those rewards but it's kind of weird uh to sell those rewards in my opinion it's probably better to just compound into single-sided uh because it means that we increase our uh, uh punk position which is always good um and then for all other vaults selling the rewards makes sense because we don't really have a loyalty towards uh those assets uh so that's that i counted them as zero because Again, uh, we're not intending to sell them to USDC, uh, so it doesn't really raise anything for the runway ID. Uh, that's practically it, I think. Cool. <clears throat> Thanks, man. Yeah, um, no problem. Yeah, that, that looks really good. Uh, and just yeah. so in case anyone's wondering, um, are the, the value of all the assets, um, excluding NFTX tokens right now, is about $35 million. I believe, uh, and then with NFTX tokens, it's uh, about sixty million. Yeah. So um, yeah, like we have a very large treasury. Uh, we just never really set much aside in stable coins. Um, and then when the market started crashing, a lot of the people on the team were thinking that maybe that would be a wise thing to do, just for worst case scenario, so we can keep running. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. Chris uh, is asking if there's any plan to add utility, send back value to NFTX holders. Um, yeah, I'll answer that because I have pretty strong opinions on it. Uh, it's, it's a question we get asked a lot in Discord right now. I think there's currently a trend in the DeFi space to reward token holders. Um, and there's a lot of talk around, you know, staking and staking incentives. Personally, I'm pretty um, against adding utility um, and financial value to the NFTX token itself, um, at least this early on. Uh, I, I definitely think like eventually the goal is for NFTX token holders to earn money. Um, I It's my personal take that a lot of projects start trying to earn money too quickly. Uh, I believe in the tech world, like a lot of tech companies will basically be pre-profit for a number of years uh, and their goal is to just eat up as much of the market share as possible uh, and then instead of trying to profit early on um, like companies like Amazon and stuff you know for, for years they were basically losing money um, until they become like the incumbent in the space and I think like looking back a couple of years at the DeFi space uh, one example is Kyber like Kyber and Uniswap basically used to be um, kind of equal competitors uh, and Kyber charged fees and they added staking for their um, KNC holders. Um, and basically that made their product less good than Uniswaps because they were charging this fee. Uh, and in my opinion, it's like they too early, they decided to start charging fees and to start getting revenue when it was totally unnecessary because they had lots of money to keep on building and developing. Uh, the, the NFT space as a whole right now is valued at like less than 20 billion, which is like, you know, less than half the market cap of like XRP 
Uh, so I think that it's totally possible that over the next five years or so, the NFT space potentially like 50 X's in, in size and that NFT X, if we keep doing what we're doing, uh, like we're already, our protocols already bringing in over a million dollars a month in cash flows. So there's no reason that we can't 50 X with the space. Um, and if and when that happens, I think that would be the time for us to start looking into, uh, you know, taking a piece of the fees uh, for token holders. Uh, the reality is right now, if we were to start taking a piece of the fees for token holders, it would be a pretty small amount of income. Um, and like, especially when you can like, maybe, maybe token holders could earn like five, 10% APR on the NFTX token, um, which is really small compared to what you can get in DeFi. And, and on top of that, we would also be opening ourselves up to another team coming in um, and undercutting us and saying like, hey, we're NFTX without the fees, um, which is kind of like what we're seeing happen to OpenSea now. You know, they've done really well over the last year, but now there's more and more teams coming in that are undercutting them. Um, and it's becoming a more competitive space, which, you know, in my opinion, like OpenSea, again, they, they decided to kind of start cashing in on revenue too early because uh, the space is still so small. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm not super keen on it. Personally, my, my uh, founder rewards, they're vested for five years, so like another four years. Um, and I'm kind of in this for the long term. And I think... You know, what's most important is that we just focus on product. Um, and like right now, if you look at tokenterminal.com, which kind of goes through like the uh, the price to sales and like the cash flows of different protocols, I believe NFTX would be in the top 30 protocol um, for how much we're earning. So we're, we're doing really well. Um, and I personally just prefer the Uniswap model of, uh, there's no reason to charge fees yet because this is still such a growing space. Uh, and my other concern is just that once you start getting into tokenomics and staking and that kind of stuff, you start attracting more investors that are in it for the tokenomics and the staking. Um, and it, and then before you know it, teams are focusing more on the tokenomics and the staking than they are of the product. So yeah, I'm kind of going on for a while here. Um, thanks, Chris. But um, yeah, and, and just like the last thing too, it's just that I think it can be a little confusing to users. I know like Sushi, for instance, they had like you could basically be uh, a liquidity provider and then you could also stake the Sushi token. Um, and then when you go to the website, it's kind of confusing. Uh, and already for NFTX, like we have staking for users. Um, so if we added staking for the NFTX token as well, it's just one more layer of friction and it's not really adding value. So, yeah, um, it's something we get asked a lot. And like end of the day, you know, the community is welcome to push back um, and to make proposals. And, you know, I'm just one voice. Uh, but, yeah, that's um, kind of my take on the situation. I think it's kind of a fad right now uh, for all the staking and the rewards and stuff. And it might not last forever because these fads tend to only go for nine months or so in DeFi. Uh, but yeah. Um, Ado, uh, do you mind talking about Florida a bit with that coming up? Hey, yep. Yep. Um, if you guys want to satisfy your, 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 your like longing for um, kind of tokenomics and stuff, you can check out Florida. Um, so, so for anyone who doesn't know, um, Florida is a is a product we've been working on for the last month or so. Um, I think it is it is the the killer app for NFTX um, because it is targeting like deep liquidity. Um, and so, like just in, in a nutshell, Florida is a uh, NFT decentralized mark making uh, protocol. Um, it's an OM fork. Uh, we use OM mechanics to kind of accumulate a a big treasury of um, blue chip NFTs, and then we deploy those into the NFTX vaults um, and various other yield strategies probably in the future. Um, and then and then this does kind of two things. Number one, it, it guarantees like deep sticky liquidity for the um, NFT collections as well as for the NFTX vaults we're targeting. 
Um, and then number two, uh, it's just really good for Floridale because, um, you know, we make a bunch of fees from, from any trading volume, um, minting, swapping, redeeming in those NFTX vaults. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of Floridale in a nutshell. And um, there's like memes around floor sweeping and stuff. And just to like expand a little bit on kind of how the flywheel works, um, like if you buy, like let's say you buy floor, um, you want exposure to a a treasury of blue chip NFT assets that also generate yield. Um, that's kind of step one, and then that allows Floordow to sell kind of bonds, right? Sell some floor at a at a discount to um, acquire these like target uh, NFT collections, and then. Um, so like in our case, we're starting with CryptoPunks um, and then let's say like the price of punk goes up, right? Because people are buying it, buying punk to bond into Florida. Um, at some point, the price of punk will be high enough such that, um, you know, people that are listing floor punks on Larva Labs, they'll either mint and sell their floor punks into um, the NFTX vault or like some, some trader will do that for them, right? And so that's where this, the floor sweeping meme comes in. Um, as if, if Floridao is successful, then there will be a lot of demand for punk and the NFT collections we're targeting. And then like that will incentivize people to like sweep the the, the collections um, from like the, the actual NFT floors and then kind of mint into the vault and then like bond it into Florida. Um, and then that's like really good for the NFT collections, right? Cause it's, you know, buying up um, their floor pieces and then it's good for NFTX. Um, generates a bunch of fees and it's good for Florida, right? Cause you know, Florida will be one of the main liquidity providers in those NFTX vaults. Um, and then yeah, Florida would generate a bunch of fees from that. And then that kind of like flows back to the first step, which is, well, now you have um, floor, which is representing um, a, a big treasury of NFT, NFT assets, as well as, you know, generating yield on them. So yeah, that's kind of like the, the, um, overview of what Floridao is. And um, yeah, in terms of update on the progress, um, since the last NFTX governance call, I think we've made a ton of progress. Um, like we've got the tokenomics squared away. There's a medium post about it. Um, the 500 ETH loan is, is, um, was passed by NFTX DAO. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, and then the uh, kind of right now we're doing the end-to-end -end testing of the app so the smart contracts the front end um the initial bond markets for crypto punks the parameters for for those markets uh, all these are being kind of tested right now um and then once we get that end-to-end -end test like smooth and uh, and everything looks okay um we'll start getting some peer reviews and then hopefully like soon after that then yeah we'll announce announce the copper launch um and then yeah let's go from there so yeah, check us out, um, follow our Twitter, um, come hang out in the Discord if you guys aren't here already. Um, and then one ask is uh, we, we suspect that like soon after launch, the, the CryptoPunk market will probably probably be kind of saturated in that like, like Floridao will start owning um, a large piece of, of the, um, the liquidity. And so we want to just have like a framework for like what other NFT collections to target, right? Whether we target blue chips, right? Which maybe like, like uh, board apes, um, or we want to target maybe like a good mix of like high volume, high turnover NFTX vaults, right? Cause we want to generate fees. Um, so yeah, just having like some, some like systematic framework to um, decide which NFT collection, NFT collections to target um, for bonding into Florida, I think would be really, really good. So if you have any like ideas, suggestions around like how to do that, um, yeah, definitely reach out and get in touch with us. Sweet, thanks, Ada. That's uh, that was perfect. Um, so we're we're thinking that um, there's a good chance we'll be having a February launch. I, I guess I don't want to put your feet to the fire on that, but um, yep, is that yep. what we're okay? Cool. Yeah, yep. this month for sure. Nice. Um, it's exciting. And um, yeah, just for everyone else, I was on a call yesterday and I was talking about how, um, like with the NFTX raise um, just over a year ago, we had uh, people uh, deposit Punk and Autoglyphs, Axies, Avastars, uh, CryptoKitties, and Ether. 
Um, and it was basically, I think it was probably one of the first examples of a community raise where we raised like protocol own value or protocol own liquidity. Um, but unlike Olympus Dow, we didn't have a mechanism to keep those amounts growing. Uh, and even though during parts of last year, uh, there were definitely some parts where I felt like we should diversify uh, and move away from punk into other assets. Um, but ultimately, we decided that it could get kind of messy with governance if we start debating every week or every month about which new NFTs to buy, um, just because, you know, there's always going to be somebody who wants to promote their bags. So I think it's a perfect dynamic now how there will be floor DAO which can basically get into this messy business of like, hey, which asset should we add next? Should it be Bored Apes? Should it be Cool Cats, um, Autoglyphs, et cetera? Uh, and that way, NFTX can kind of just focus on product and protocol. Um, and Fordow, yeah, can basically take over this governance um, situation of building larger and larger uh, liquidity uh, bags. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah um, what else to talk about um, I was just going to mention the two two votes that are sitting on snapshot at the moment as well um, if anyone is an NFTX holder and wants to go across to snapshot and cast your vote we're looking at um, one updating the punk vault fees um, but more to be in line with the new uh, set of default fees that uh, has been proposed uh, the punk is moving uh, at the moment. It is running on, uh, where are we? It's running on 0% fees for minting. Um, so the new the new fee set is going to be uh, 5% for uh, mint, 2% for random redeem, 3% for buy, 2% for random swap, and 3% for targeted swap. Uh, and that will be carried across to any kind of any. Uh, that gets carried across to what the recommendations are for all the default fees. So the split for the default fees um, will keep the 10% mint fee because it's an instant sale, instant liquidity. I think that's pretty fair. Um, but then dropping instead of being 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, uh, it'll be 10, 4, 6, 4, 6. So they've all passed uh, the forum quorum. Um, but yeah, if you go over to the snapshot and and vote on that, Yeah. Um, and I'll also just touch on um, some of the reasoning behind why the punk fees are where they are and why we're changing them. Uh, so the punk vault is unique in that it's our largest vault uh, by TVL. And it's uh, the reason it's so large by TVL is because the NFTX DAO holds most of the punk liquidity uh, and punk inventory. I think we have like over 70 crypto punks that we have in there, along with a lot of ETH that we're putting into liquidity. And until now, we've never staked any of that. Um, so what that means is since we have like, let's say 80% of the punk vault, um, that the 20% of people that, you know, external users who are staking on it, they're basically getting like four times juiced rewards uh, because they're getting all the rewards that the NFTX DAO would otherwise get. And yeah, our thinking for that was it'd be a good way to help the punk vault grow. Um, and we were able to get away with having lower fees on it to make it more competitive. But uh, basically, it's, um, I don't think it's ideal for us to be subsidizing that vault uh, because it kind of gives us uh, a false impression of what's working and what isn't working. So, and also it's, you know, it's, uh, income that the DAO could be earning and that it could be going towards treasury. So we decided that we will likely be staking all the NFTX punk holdings, um, which will in effect dilute the rewards of the current external stakers, which is why we're increasing the fees on that vault. And yeah, the new logic for the fees is that we'll be tweaking the, the regular fees a little bit so that it's uh, 6% Sorry if you just said this, Javery. I was I was kind of distracted, but yeah, six percent for um, target redeeming and six percent for target swapping, uh, ten percent for minting, and we're thinking we'll do half that for the the higher value vaults, 
we basically see like there being two types of vaults at the moment. There's the high turnover vaults. Uh, you have stuff like uh, UU crew, uh, basically anything that's new, that's lower in price. It seems like people are willing to pay like the 10% mint fee, uh, stuff like funks, um, fake or, you know, pay C. Uh, there's, there's a lot of turnover and people don't mind those higher percentage fees because the items themselves are, are less in value. But then when you get into the higher value NFTs that have less turnover, stuff like punks, uh, a 10% mint fee is pretty hefty because 10% on like an 80 ETH asset, uh, like that's like 80 ETH, which is pretty large. So we'll do half the regular fees for the higher for the higher value fees, excuse me. Um, and we're thinking we'll probably make the cutoff for that around 10 ETH. Um, so that we'll try it with the punk fall first. Uh, and if that seems to work well, then we may consider doing the same thing for other high value vaults, uh, stuff like Cool Cats, which I think is around like 11 ETH now, uh, Basie, Macy, uh, et cetera. But uh, yeah, we, we want to try and avoid tweaking individual vaults too much and have some sort of standardized approach. It's it's difficult to know exactly what the the optimal fees are because a lot of stuff in the space is still changing. Like we now have aggregators coming out, uh, more people using stuff like Gem, which is great for NFTX because it gets more eyes on our vault uh, and more demand for people purchasing from NFTX. So stuff like that can really help with fee revenue. Uh, but yeah, we'll do these, as long as these votes go through on Snapshot, then we'll do these minor tweaks and we'll kind of check back in a month or two and see how things are going. Uh, I guess we can open it up now if anyone has um, questions or thoughts. Uh, just a reminder, like the, most of the team, we, we meet basically every morning. Um, so um, if, it, if it feels like we're ever kind of short on stuff to just talk about on the Gov call, it's, it's because we often go through um, other things. I should put inventory state on my Ha. Huh. Uh, yeah, good question, Hubert. <laughs> yeah, uh, just go for it. And um, anyone that's worried about uh, staking risks, I, I've updated the, the document nftx.wtf. It's not nearly as detailed or as polished as the Academy site, which uh, Javery is largely in charge of. But there is a, a part there about the staking risks near the bottom of the page, uh, just to you know make sure you're aware of all the risks before you ape in. Josh, did you wanna did you wanna say something? Yeah, Alex. Um, and thanks for the whole NFTX for hosting these. I usually like listen to them on YouTube, but I really appreciate it. I guess two questions I had um, just as a user that I, I'm not sure I missed the first couple of minutes of the call were just if there were any plans regarding going on any layer twos um, or like what that if there were any like business development plans there as well as. I know that there's like a Rari vault to get like leverage on the punk pulp. Um, but I was just curious if you guys had any of your like plans there to potentially like collaborate with a lending money market or um, something like that in the future. Yeah, um, definitely. Great question. Uh, especially about the L2, uh, something I forgot to mention. We are working on deploying on L2s. Um, we're in the process of deploying on Arbitrum right now. Uh, which I've been working on over the last week and um, pretty cool. My first time using Arbitrum and it feels a lot like uh, using Ethereum before gas fees were so high. And I think after Arbitrum, we'll probably be looking at doing uh, Polygon after that. And um, oh, and in terms of Rari, um, Sorry, Toes, do you want to speak now? Is this regarding this question? Yeah, this is for uh, yeah. question part two. Um, actually, good timing. I was going to say this update is uh, today we submitted an MIP6, which is a maker improvement proposal, um, which is essentially part of the process to be supported um, as a collateral type in uh, maker DAO's ecosystem to use uh, Punk as collateral uh, to get a die loan. Um, so yeah, literally just submitted it this morning. Um, We've been working with the MakerDAO BD team 
on this proposal. So, you know, we feel really good about it, but, you know, MakerDAO has uh, pretty advanced, you know, decentralized governance. So uh, we're going to run through that whole process, but definitely plans to to keep uh, upping the utility of, uh, of punk tokens and different uh, DeFi protocols. Yeah, and, and thanks, Toz. Um, pretty exciting that we might be, you know, getting added to as Maker uh, Collateral. Um, they reached out because they were interested in learning about NFTs uh, for potential collateral options, and it seemed like it was a perfect fit. So um, that would be really cool. And we've also been talking about just general use cases um, in addition, like stuff like um, lending or borrowing punk. Um, we also thinking about something we're calling execution modules. So right now it's possible to basically flash loan yourself uh, the punk token or another vault, pull out all the punks um, for like a single transaction, use them all for something. Um, like for example, back in the day when you could have claimed me bits um, and then put them all back into the vault. Um, so that would be like a flash loan. And the only problem with that is that it's very gas intensive because you have to pull every NFT out and then put them all back in on a single transaction. So we've been discussing ways that you could basically flash ownership of the vault um, and kind of impersonate the vault and then use. And so you wouldn't actually have to pull out all the items. You could just use the vault inventory in some way uh, and then keep the proceeds from whatever action you do. And we think that could be pretty powerful in the future with like play to earn uh, and basically different games. Like if, you know, you need some sort of, um, let's say, you, you know, Pokemon NFT game and you need like 100 Pokemon to get through some, some gate, then you could like flash control of the Pokemon vault, um, do your action and then take the proceeds and keep that and then just pay some fee. Um, so it's basically other revenue streams other than just liquidity uh, and fees that vaults could be earning. But we're still kind of in the theory stages of all that. And personally, um, I think it's really important that we still focus on our main core use case, which is um, automated inventory and liquidity, and in particular, getting the spreads uh, tighter. Sorry, that was a bit of a ramble. But um, any other questions? Or Josh, if you want to follow up after that, um, feel free. No, that helps a lot, Alex. In terms of um, why you guys haven't staked the NFTX Punk Vault or LP that you guys have, uh, could you expand a little bit deeper of why it's not staked? Yeah, so it's just until now, we just saw it as a way that we could, like we didn't really need the money uh, because we have like, you know, uh, 40, 50 million in the treasury. And we thought that, if we juice the rewards, uh, then there's a better chance that more people would join the punk vault and it would grow even bigger and it would kind of solidify our moat in the space and make us that much harder to compete against. But uh, with Floridao now coming out, like Floridao will basically play that role of helping grow the liquidity moats of certain blue chip vaults. And um, yeah, just my personal take was that it's, it's kind of artificial how we're juicing the punk vault because um, it's difficult for us to know what the right fees are if we're not just letting the market run as it would without any subsidy. Um, so yeah, I think it's better if we just kind of stake all those assets and then that way the NFTX treasury can earn money and then we can get a more realistic idea of like where fees need to be to hit that optimum point where there's still high demand for people to use the vault and the stakers are still earning um, good, good enough returns that the vault doesn't kind of nosedive. Cool. That makes sense. Um, cool. One more question I had regarding your launch on Arbitrum was just if you guys were going to like bridge over certain LPs or just totally work with Arbitrum native LPs, potentially like the stuff within the magic treasure DAO ecosystem. So that's a good question. It's too bad Nick's not here uh, or Caps because um, he's the one that's kind of been pushing for this. I'm pretty sure the plan is to just open up NFTX and see what happens at first. So see if vaults organically get created um, with Arbitrum NFTs. Uh, I don't think we'll be bridging over any of the inventory of the current vaults. Uh, although we have been in discussions with teams 
about bridging over the vault tokens himself. Uh, just yesterday, um, I was asked a question about like bridging over the doodle token to Polygon so that they could use it for um, low cost tipping. So I think there's a good chance that we will be bridging over the vault tokens themselves. So like punk, uh, doodle, cool, uh, et cetera. But it's unlikely that we'll bridge over the actual inventory. But we think that could be a pretty cool dynamic. Uh, if basically like the main net is used as um, like the clearing house for these vaults where the inventory is actually stored, but then people can trade the vault tokens on the lower gas environments and get exposure that way. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, even if you guys um, brought in liquidity through FloorDAO and bridged it that way so people could trade punk um, mm -hmm. with, you know, US or even NFTX, USDC and ETH, I think that would be ideal. Um, just because, you know, I, I there's a lot of transactions where I do want to make, but like, you know, just approving and like it, it just makes it not economically worth it. Um, so yeah, it's, just it's as tough. a user, I think that's, yeah, it's, it's my top, definitely a uh, pain point for sure. Um, yeah, the gas is definitely a, a killer right now. Um, like I've had a bunch of UUs I want to stake and I'm still kind of waiting for gas to go down low enough. So and it's a tough situation because all these NFTs are still on mainnet. So even the process of bridging the NFTs would be very expensive. But um, I, I've been, I was pretty surprised like working with Arbitrum the last week, like how many projects are on Arbitrum now. Um, and how much is going on. So I think we're kind of hitting that inflection point where more teams start launching in L2s. Um, so it'd be good for us to at least have our protocol on L2s so we can see if it gets, uh, picks up organic usage. And yeah, for the for small traders, uh, it just makes sense to have our vault tokens on stuff like Polygon so that people can arb smaller amounts um, without paying as much gas and keep the prices in line more. Yeah, cool, 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 I mean, cool. yeah. Just want to add on to that, like, um, you know, the Arbitrum NFT ecosystem, especially through Magic and Treasure DAO, is getting pretty big as well. So I think if you guys can, you know, become the tokenization yeah. standard, that it would be definitely a huge opportunity. Um, but cool. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. No. No worries. Um, and yeah, totally. I think we we're planning on doing Polygon first, but then since like uh, Magic and Treasure DAO and like all that. Um, you know, getting a lot of excitement, we decide to do Arbitrum first, but a Polygon will probably be next. Um, yeah, and w just one small question I was curious about is if you guys have had any relationships or communication with like centralized exchanges who might want to list like Punk token in itself, um, or um, like your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, Toes, um, do you have any thoughts on that? I know you're pretty new to the team. Um, but like on getting our like punk listed on centralized exchanges. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely in the um, in the works. Uh, we've been you know going through those processes, which are usually pretty long tail, where they ask for a lot of information up front, and then they really go through all the steps of analyzing you know the legal standings and all that good stuff. So uh, no updates I can share now, but that's definitely part of our uh, BD roadmap. Yeah, um, it, it'll definitely be been kind of like my dream from day one to get like punk onto like Coinbase. Um, so I, I think it'll, it'll think it will happen, and it's just it's harder than I originally expected to kind of make that leap. Uh, so we've been focusing just on like product and development, but yeah, it's it's definitely on very high on my to do list, um, and I think the rest of the team as well. Yeah, and the biggest blockers for like big exchanges is typically like liquidity and stuff like that. So FloorDAO, I think, is you know the killer app, like Ado mentioned, for a couple reasons. But it's almost like a, a self feeding cycle where the more liquidity we have, the more attractive Punk is as an option uh, to be listed on exchanges. The more exchanges it's on, the more liquidity. So it, everything kind of feeds into itself. So we're definitely really excited about Flor FloorDAO kicking off and. Uh, deepening that liquidity yeah thanks toes uh any other questions thoughts um just we're almost at an hour here um i don't think i have anything else to talk about
should we should we call it chop or what's the Jabri? Yeah, I think we could call it if there's anyone else that has anything else to add before we wrap up. No, so thank you everyone for uh, contributing and coming along and uh, being part of the discussion. Uh, thanks to Ato who has dropped off for, for going through and letting us know uh, all about Flordow as well um, and for the guest contributions and questions during. Um, our next, uh, if we look, our next governance call will be in March and it'll be March 2nd. Uh, at the same time, we'll put this into Discord as well and you can sort of tag yourself in it if you want to be uh, reminded and notified when that's coming up uh, we'll put this uh, up onto youtube in the next couple of days on our channel and from a request that came through uh, previously we're also going to um uh transcribe the uh call as well so that for for people who may not have english as a first language and struggle to understand australian accents they can uh, read through what was said throughout the discussions. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone, and we'll see you in a month. Thanks, Al. See you guys. Thanks for joining. Bye.